Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the lens, hyperopia, and myopia. So with that, let's give it a go. So I'd like to begin by talking about how converging lenses focus light. So if we were to have a converging lens and an object that was really far away, the light rays that were reflected off the object would come into the lens largely parallel to each other. So each of the light rays come in parallel, and when they enter into the lens, they slow down and refract. And they refract to this point right here where all the light rays converge. So it's important to realize that when objects are far away, the light rays that come into the lens become more parallel. And the more parallel they are, the easier it is for the lens to focus these light rays to a certain point. Now, what if we were to take the object and move it closer to the lens? Well, if we were to move the object closer to the lens, the light rays would not be parallel to each other. Instead, they come into the lens at an angle. And when they come into the lens at an angle, this means that it's harder for the lens to focus the light rays together. So as a result of this, the point where the light rays converge is further away. So the convergence points of the light is now further away when the object is moved closer to the lens. But how can we get the convergence point to the original position? So in other words, how can we get the light rays to converge at a point closer to the lens than it is right now? So the main thing that we have to talk about is the focal power. So the focal power is given by this equation, where 1 over the focal length is equal to n2 minus n1 over the radius of curvature. So this is the focal power, and this is the radius of curvature. And remember that the radius of curvature for a lens, it can be found when you take a lens and basically affix it to a circle. And when you draw the circle, as we see right here from the ends, you can measure the radius of curvature. And the radius of curvature basically describes how curved your lens is. So the general rule of thumb is that the smaller the radius of curvature, the larger the focusing power. And the larger the radius of curvature, the smaller the focusing power. So how can we modulate the radius of curvature? Well, the way that we can modulate the radius of curvature is to round out the lens. So to see how, what I mean by this, imagine you have a lens, and this lens has a specific radius of curvature. Now, if we were to take the same lens and round it out a bit, as, like we see right here, the radius of curvature has actually decreased. So what we see here is that if we use this equation, we can see that the one with the lower radius of curvature has a greatest focusing power. And the, we can get a greater focusing power by rounding out the lens. So this lens has the greater focal power out of the two, and the reason why is because it's more rounded. The more rounded the lens, the lower the radius of curvature, and the lower the radius of curvature, the higher the focal power. So it's this key concept that our own lenses and our body are going to use in order to see objects that are close to us. So we're going to now talk about this process in the body called accommodation. So imagine you have an object that is far away, and now this picture isn't really accurate, but if you have an object that's really far away, the light rays are largely going to be coming in parallel into the lens. Now when they come in parallel to the lens, it's easier for the lens to refract them. And what we see here is that when you have an object that's far away, the lens is actually going to be more stretched out. And the reason why it's stretched out is because when you stretch out the lens, you increase the radius of curvature, which gives it less of a focusing power. And, when, and then it projects the light and converges it on the retina, allowing us to see it. Now, if you were to have an object that was closer, this means that the light rays are less parallel. Therefore, the lens needs to have a higher focusing power. And the way it does that is by rounding out. So the lens, as we see here, becomes thicker, and it, and it basically decreases its radius of curvature, which therefore increases its ability to focus the light. And it's this process that's called accommodation. So accommodation occurs when you're looking at objects that are very close to the eye, and it's basically when the lens rounds out and thickens in order to increase its focal power. And when it rounds out, it decreases the radius of curvature, which therefore allows the lens to better focus the light onto the retina. So that's what accommodation is. So now we're going to finish off this video by talking about two things, hyperopia and myopia. So what is hyperopia? So hyperopia, or farsightedness, is this. So imagine you have an eye, and this eye is a hyperopic eye. 
And this eye is looking at an object that is far away. So as you know, when you have light rays coming from a faraway object, they're largely going to be parallel. So as a result, you don't need that much focusing power in order to converge these light, these light rays. So when, you're, when this eye is looking at an object that is far away, the light rays nicely converge onto the retina. And therefore, what we see here is that these eyes are very nicely able to see far away objects. So hyperopic eyes, our farsightedness, are eyes that can see far away objects very well. Now what if you were to look at a close object? Well, if you're to look at a close object, the light rays are not parallel, so therefore you need to have a greater focusing power in the lens in order to converge the light rays onto the retina. But in hyperopic eyes, you're not able to do this as well. So therefore, what happens is, is that the lens doesn't have enough focusing power in order to converge the light rays onto the retina. Instead, the light rays would converge if they were allowed to go that far behind the retina. So the person does not see nearby objects very well. So the closer the object, the worse the person sees them. So how would we fix this eye? Well, the hyperopic lens doesn't have enough focusing power to focus light rays from close objects. Therefore, we need to increase the focusing power of the lens. And the fix for this is going to be a converging lens. So a converging lens in the person's glasses would increase the focusing power of the person's lens, allowing them to see close objects better. So what about myopia? So let's just take the same scenario. So we take the person's eye and we look at a faraway object. Now when we look at a faraway object, what we see with the myopic eye is that the light converges before it hits the retina. So in other words, the myopic eye does not see faraway objects very well. But if you were to take the object and move it closer to the eye, what you would see is that the light converges on the retina. So therefore, they can see close objects very well. So what would be the fix of this? Well, the fix for this would be considering the fact that the myopic lens has too much focusing power. So the myopic lens is too powerful to focus light rays from faraway objects. Therefore, we need to decrease the focusing power of the lens in order to fix this. So the fix for a myopic eye is going to be would be a diverging lens. So a diverging or concave lens in their glasses would help to fix this. So I hope this video helped you understand these concepts and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.